Bloomberg Surveillance with Ken Pruitt and Tom Keen, Friday, January 29th, 2010. Gross domestic product, 5.7% annual growth in the fourth quarter of the year, a full point above the consensus of economists in our survey and more than double the growth we saw in the third quarter of 2.2%. Tom? And, and now joining us, Peter Book for our Miller Tabic. Peter, good morning. Hey, Tom. You went right for the heart of it. I saw the headlines come out. The first thing I saw was little inflation. Help our listeners understand why you look at top-line animal spirits, and then you take out a little bit of inflation, and that gives you that better real GDP statistic. Right, because the the, the economy generates a nominal improvement in the economy, and then that we deflate that down based on an inflation rate to get a real number. So the 5.7% 5.7% reported headline real number seemed much better than consensus of 4.7. But if you look at what the nominal number was, nominal GDP rose 6.3% versus consensus of 6%. So it certainly was better, but it wasn't as much uh, above expectations relative to yeah. the real report. And folks, I wish I could bronze and frame what Mr. Bookvar just said. This is a huge thing that so many, many people get wrong, going from nominal to the low deflator down to the better real. Is this going to be a redux of third quarter? Will we see revisions down, down uh, over those next two tweaks to this fourth quarter GDP? Uh, well, inventory was a huge contributor to the uh, gain and added more than 3%. So I think that will be the, the, the swing factor in whether we get that. I do continue to expect uh, inventory drawdowns to uh, moderate. So I'm not sure if the uh, revisions will be that much because typically, especially with the deflator, the revisions aren't that much. Well, Peter, what's happening here in the first quarter? Well, that, that's the concern. I mean, if you look at the stock market action of the past week and a half, it was concerns about Q1 and how the rest of the year was going to look like. It wasn't focused on Q4. So in a way, today's news is old news. Uh, Q1, I do expect to see a continuation of this inventory contribution to GDP with still iffy uh, contributions from consumer spending and exports as the rest of the world still shows uh, only moderate pieces of gain. So it'll be a plus number, uh, but... The sustainability still is an open question because after this inventory contribution runs out, uh, are we going to see end demand picking up uh, the mantle? But it's uh, it's not going to shift into reverse, right? No, we're not going to see that for a little while. Uh, but as we get wait a minute, for a little while, when are we going to see it? Well, the pro- the problem that the economy has is the government has put up a speed bump or possibly a roadblock with if the economy gets better, they're going to have to tighten policy. And as we get further into 2010, we face a massive tax hike in 2010 and 2011 with marginal rates, dividend uh, rates, and the capital gains tax. So that in and of itself is going to freeze business decisions in the latter part of 2010. And that is my concern. And that is where I raise the potential for a double dip. Peter, when you when you slurred through GDP, one of the mysteries, and I had the privilege of speaking to Ken Rogoff of this in Davos, is this rollover in investment. What's going to save the day after the stimulus? I mean, is it we need investment to come back? Well, I think it's going to be a big contributor. It's going to be investment, and it's going to be exports, because we know the contribution from consumer spending is going to be muted for a while. So we need uh, spending, and we need exports to do that. And I want to emphasize also exports, and that we have to make things that the rest of the world wants. Uh, The investment component comes in, because corporate balance sheets are still very healthy, and a lot of healthy companies usually take uh, moderate outlooks and take that as a way to grow and invest in their business. Peter Bookfar with us, Miller Tabak. We give you uh, perspective digging deeper into the numbers off of the 830 uh, GDP report. Uh, uh, folks, thanks for the emails here in Switzerland. Uh, Peter, Al from New Jersey emailed in, and he had a real short, simple question. Hey, great number. Are thoughts of stimulus over? I, I mean, when you get 5.7% statistic, how can you have stimulus? Well, y- you're, you're exactly right, and you can also at the same time say, how can you have interest rates at zero? Uh, so I, I think the, 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 the purpose of the stimulus, at least it was sold to us last year, is the economy is falling off a cliff. We need the stimulus to have an immediate impact. And then further in, we heard, well, it's not going to really have an impact until 2010. Uh, I, I think they wanted to have it to space it out 
so as to provide a support uh, and a baseline uh, for growth above that. Well, Peter, you know, the Federal Reserve is still using the phrase extended period, the, the Federal Open Market Committee. How much longer? Well, I think a key component to that sentence is also exceptionally low. I mean, rates are going to stay low for an extended period for a while, because even if they go to 1.5%, that's still low for an extended period. It's how exceptionally low will they be. To me, exceptionally is the most important word in that sentence, and hopefully uh, it will be taken out soon. And you wonder if Honig's dissent the other day uh, is a precursor to that word coming out, uh, because we know that rates will stay low for an extended period. Just how low will they be is the question. Is there a danger of keeping the rates too low for too long? There's no question, and I think they've already passed that. And the irony of this whole situation is that's the that was the genesis of the previous bubble. Peter, I haven't had a chance to talk to you over here in Switzerland, but the Honig dissent, was that a big deal? I think it was because I think it was important that at least someone in the Fed stepped up and realized that or took the opinion that When rates went to zero back in December of 08, there was an emergency situation and that we are so far away from that emergency. We understand the economy is still tough. It's still difficult, but it's still far from an emergency. Therefore, policy needs to adapt to that new reality. And I'm glad at least one person stood up and gave an opinion on that. Peter, uh, you know, I guess diving back into GDP and the, and the soup of it all, government spending sort of flat, defense spending... But, but not like, non-defense spending rose yeah. 8%. Well, what does that mean? What does that suggest to you? I mean, help us with the, the variability of, G, of government statistics that, you know, to be honest, we never look at. Right. Well, it, 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 it grows because the, the, the stimulus spending shows up in that number, and that's one of the contributions that we're going to continue to see to GDP as the administration yeah. wants to believe that cons- government spending is going to be the boost. Well, how are corporate profits? They're still good. I mean, companies in the, in the, in, in the fourth quarter are beating expectations by about 80%, and the yeah. revenue beats are above what we've seen in Q2, Q3. I bring that up because that's what I'm hearing in Davos. If, if that's good, why does America feel so bad? But what we are hearing from many CEOs is there's still a lot of uncertainty about the economy. There's still a lot of uncertainty about end demand and the sustainability of of growth. And corporate CEOs see what's going on uh, policy initiative-wise in Washington, and they're uncertain. And there's still uh, a lot of... um, speed bumps that are potentially out there. So corporate executives have done a great job in executing in a very tough environment. Uh, maintaining a certain level of growth rate, though, becomes more difficult after what we've seen over the past three quarters. Well, Peter, just so we're, we're clear here, you're, you're not a double dipper, right? I mean, we've, no, we've seen I, all the negative growth already. No, I think there's high potential that we see it in the third quarter and the fourth quarter in anticipation of, of higher taxes on capital coming in 2011 and the Fed uh, taking away some of their stimulus. I mean, the one problem that we have in 2010 is a lot of the tailwinds in 2009 become headwinds in 2010 in terms of fiscal and monetary stimulus and uh, predominantly and a different level of expectations this year relative to the, what was the very low expectations that we saw last year. So what, what happens to the unemployment rate then under that forecast? Well, it's going to stay elevated, and that is because we're not going to generate enough jobs relative to the growth in, in, uh, in the labor force to offset that. And even when the economy does gain some labs, you still have a lot of people that have dropped out of the labor force that will re-enter it in the hopes of finding a job. Peter, uh, just 30 seconds, sorry for that one headline, worst GDP annually since 1946. Are we going to see a year like 2009 ever again in our lifetime? Is it a one-off generational event? Uh, We can only hope, but if the main reason why we had such an awful year is because of a massive deleveraging from a credit bubble, well, we have to understand that Mm -hmm. it always comes down to debt whether it's at the company level, a country level, a consumer level. When you have too much debt, it's going to eventually end yeah. badly. Peter, let's wrap it up there. Thank you so much for coming on quickly. A surprising statistic within the GDP. If you want to hear Mr. Bookvar's comments, go to Tom Keen On Demand. We'll have the interview there, only there in full. Ken, uh, just, you know, it's a nice overlay to some of the European gloom uh, here in Davos. Listen to Bloomberg Surveillance weekday mornings at 7 Eastern on Bloomberg 1130 in New York or on Satellite Radio, Sirius Channel 130 and XM Channel 129. 
There's more radio and television news on the Bloomberg Terminal at AVGO and at Bloomberg.com. Stream it live. Download to your iPod or desktop. Copyright 2010.